By the astrological chart in this paper, this is the luckiest day in the month for me. Well, this might be the day for you to ask Mr. Dunbar for that promised raise. Say, that's an idea, darling. Now that the depression is over, why, it ought to be easy. Oh, good morning, Emma. Excuse me, Mrs. Cobb, but this tablecloth is signed. I think I'd better fit in with the other wash. I'm almost finished, Emma. Yes, I'm finished. I'll be needing that napkin, too, sir. Yeah. Mm. Nice girl, Emma. Sort of a diamond in the rough. She needs a lot of polishing, yeah. but she's a good washwoman. Ooh, darling, I'm spilling. Don't forget that long promised raise in it. No, you bet I won't, darling. You just keep your fingers crossed. Bye-bye. Good luck. Hello, Tony. Good morning, Mr. Cobb. Tony, how are you getting on with the head? Let's put it good. Well, you know, the whole trouble is, is right. these buggies that see them up with the leaves. Buggies? Sure. Blue buggies? No, no, the leaves. The oh, leaves. leaf buggies. Uh, yeah. But I got enough stuff now. Have you? The buggies was left with the other stuff, but they don't left for now. They don't, eh? No, sir. <laughs> you know what I've done? What? I shoot the buggy with this gun. Uh-huh. And the buggy just jump him up and laugh. Yeah. And when he's a laugh, yeah. I give him a second a shot, and let's make it the buggy choke it. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's my train. No, no, that's no train. That's my buggy. Oh, is that you? And that's what's making the buggy fall down and he's a dead. Oh, good, good. Good business, sir. Oh, yeah. there is my train. <laughs> I just mentioned it, you know. You're absolutely right, Ernest. It was an oversight. When you were appointed eighth vice president, automatically your salary was raised. Now, you tell Blair that your salary was raised three weeks ago. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh. Thank you, that's splendid. Oh, by the way, hmm. did you close that order with Mr. Crosby of Kansas City? <laughs> Say, that bird's a wonder. <laughs> he has me worn out. He's crazy about nightclubs and simply won't talk business. I haven't been to bed in four nights. Oh, well, it's worth it if you can sell him. I'll say it is. His 49 stores are worth going after. Oh, I'm sure you'll land him all right. <clears throat> Dunbar brand, best bar none. The natural fruit aroma and flavor direct from the tree to your home. Ernest, you hit it when you said home. Yes, sir. You live in Bayside, don't you? Uh, that is, uh, Upper Bayside. Ernest, how'd you like to arrange a little dinner at your home tonight? I'll invite E.W. Crosby as the guest of honor. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd be glad to, only my home is, uh... Just the thing, Ernest. Quiet, peaceful. Few of your close friends? That'll give me a chance to get Crosby in the corner and set the deal. Yes. Well, of course, if you wish it, I'll be delighted. <laughs> Now, you better take the rest of the day off, Ernest. That'll give you and your little wife a chance to sort of arrange things. You can expect Crosby and me about 8 o'clock. Yes. Oh, yes, it'll be a great pleasure. Only, uh, well... Woody! Darling! Ah! Ah! Emma, you, you, you put these things in the kitchen, Emma. Is Mrs. Cobb upstairs? No, sir. She's gone, and she won't be back until 6.30. What? 6.30? You know where she's gone? No, sir. All I know is she's gone to a bridge in a tea. Oh, Emma, this is a dreadful mess. This is one of the most important days in my life. I've got to give a dinner to Mr. Dunbar, our president. And here she's... And, well, I'll give it myself. Good luck to you, sir. Yeah, well, now, wait a minute. You've got to help me. Oh, no, sir, I'd like to, but... Uh... I was thinking of five dollars. So was I. But I don't know anything about such things. It's woman's work, and it ought to be simple. Come along. Detailed directions for formal dinner. <laughs> the requisites at every dinner, whether a great one of 200 covers or a little one of 10, are as follows. Guess. People who are congenial to one another. That is of first importance. Well, now, let's see. I can't get 200, but I, I can get 10. 10? Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> yes, 
Dinner at eight tonight and strictly formal. And bring six spoons. And bring six spoons. Yes, thank you. Now, what did you make me order all those knives and forks and things for? Sure, you wouldn't want your guests eating with their fingers. Oh. And you've only silver service for six. You might as well do it upright. Yes, I suppose you're right. And, oh, Emma, Emma, listen to this. It is the duty of the butler in admitting the guests to take the gentlemen's hats and sticks and the ladies' wraps. But you've got no butler, sir. No. Uh. But we'll have one. Tony, come here. Okay, boss. Tony. Tony, how would you like to bottle for me? What's it this bottle? Why, uh, one who bottles. You know, opens the door and waits on the table. Oh, sure. My brother has got fine suit for that. Yeah? I take him his suit. Oh, say, that's perfect. Now we're all set. Now, you know, all you have to do is to uh, walk very quietly, very quietly, open the door, and take the gentleman's hats and sticks. Where? What? Sticks. No, walking sticks, canes. Oh, sure. Yes. <laughs> then you see... I catch on. You, you catch on. That's fine. Then you take the lady's wraps, place them here, and then very quietly you announce their names. Mr. and Mrs. What? What? No, no. Well, whatever their names are, I mean, you just... Now, now, now have you got that now? Is that clear? Oh, sure. <laughs> That's it. That's fine. Yes, I think you have it. Why, Ernest? <laughs> Hello, darling. What are all the preparations in the dining room for? And why are you wearing your wedding clothes? Darling, we're giving a formal dinner for ten people. Emma's cooking it right now. A formal dinner? Yeah. But, Ernest, we can't do it. Well, I've done it already. But why? Because, darling... Uh, oh, dear me. <clears throat> Mr. Dunbar, my president, has practically ordered me to. Yes, you see, it's a, it concerns a big business deal. Oh, don't you worry, darling. Everything's going to be all right. But, <clears throat> Ernest, Maud... Oh, dear me. Uh, get the ink, dear. I'll soon fix that up. <laughs> Look at this, dear. Remember the old lid? Just married? <laughs> that's fine. Ah, oh, that's splendid, dear. Thank you. What time are we having dinner? Well, at 8 o'clock. Oh, you've only got 25 minutes. You better hurry up and get dressed. Gracious, yes. I'll go down and fix the cocktails. <clears throat> Cocktail. Yes, sir. Everything is all ready, sir. The secret of the thing, Emma, is to make the first cocktail of Pippin. After that, it doesn't matter. They'll drink anything. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Hello, boss. How I look, eh? Oh, you look fine. Yes, sir, that's actually professional. But I'm afraid we could do without the apron. Well, if you don't like it, the apron, boss, I take them off. Well, that's fine. I know show you now, but after a while, I got a big surprise. <laughs> good, good. Come here. You hold this for me. I'm going to make a new cocktail. At least it's a new one on me. Uh, equal parts, Bacardi rum and grenadine. Now, uh, let's see. Ah, yes. Uh. <laughs> That's pretty, isn't it, huh? Mm. Well, uh, oh, equal portions, brandy and Holland gin. Oh, sir, that sounds exciting. Gin, chartreuse, and Benedictine. I thought there was something missing. Slow gin. Chartreuse and Benedictine. <laughs> now we got something, Tony. <clears throat> Wait a minute, we just put a little uh, 
little sparkle in it, huh? Little ginger ale, make it sparkle, sparkle. <clears throat> now we got ice. Now, huh, Tony, you shake them up. Oh, shake them up good. Fix them up good. You fix them up. What? Cocktail must be all right, Tony. <clears throat> oh, no, you gotta give him a good shake -em. Yeah, let me have it. Give it to me. This is the way to shake him. We call this a volcano cocktail, huh? Oh, Mr. Cobb. Oh, Emma, I'm in a terrible pickle. Look, and this is... Ooh, oh. this is the only shirt that I have. What? Ah. Any shirt in a storm, there we go. You better hold him down, boss. It's a kick you like a mule. Yes, yeah, <laughs> watch him. That's fine. <laughs> oh, darling, you look gorgeous. And it's your tight. Yeah, well, so am I. <laughs> Don't worry, darling. Everything's all right, except I just had a little accident. An accident? Yeah, I lost my shirt. <laughs> Tony, no, no. Slow, slow, Tony. That's it. Give it back. <laughs> What's the name, please? Oh, good counting, Tony. We know you. Hi, boy. Hey, boss. They don't want to tell their names. Oh, that's all right. They don't know their etiquette. Oh, I see. Oh, we'll get the cocktails. Hey, you old high binder. What is this? A raffle? What's this? These are the forks you asked me to bring. And the knife. Oh. And the spoon. Ah. Well, Ernest, I wasn't quite sure, but you certainly thought of everything. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, make yourselves at home. Yeah. Just roll on the floor, hang on the chandelier, anything you like. Yeah. <laughs> Say, come, let's see, Willie. What's this all about? Well, Bob, I'm not quite sure. Ernest arranged everything. <laughs> well, here we are, E.W. Yeah. Tony! Slow. What's the name, please? That's all right, Tony. I'll take care of them. Serve the drinks, please. Is Mr. Ernest Cobb at home? Why, yes. Uh, we're friends of Mr. Cobb's. Well, I'm sorry I can't ask you in. I'll tell Mr. Cobb you're here. <laughs> I wonder, can this be the right Cobb home? It looks like a wedding or a wink is going on here. <laughs> <laughs> darling, yeah. darling, huh? there are a couple of men outside who want to see you. I didn't ask them in because they're not dressed. Oh, well, I I'll see who it is, darling. I'll go. No, we don't want any fish. <laughs> oh, Mr. Dunbar. Oh, this is a surprise. A surprise? Yeah. Well, it's 8 o'clock, isn't it? Is it? Oh, yeah. I thought it was 8 o'clock. <laughs> come in. Come on in. <laughs> come in, <Dylan. laughs> uh, <clears throat> What's the name, please? No, 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 Tony. It's all right. Just take the hat. <laughs> Darling, this is our president, Mr. Dunbar. Mr. Dunbar? Yeah, this is my wife. How do you do, Miss Cobb? How do you do? It's my friend, Mr. Crosby. How do you do, Mr. Crosby? Oh, uh, Ernest, you haven't met uh, Mr. Crosby. Oh, how do you do? Uh, how Ms. do you Cobb. do? <laughs> the dinner, she's a sir. Hey, hey, boss. Yes. The dinner, she's the cook. Yeah, <coughs> that's all right. Go right ahead. <laughs> He's our old family container. <laughs> Been with us for years. <laughs> Tommy, fellow. <laughs> now, personally, I think it's up to Ernest to tell us in as few words as possible just why we're here and what this is all about. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, <clears throat> from what I have learned today, and I'm sure that you will agree with me, that I make a much better dinner than I do a speech. <laughs> <laughs> but looking at your friendly faces gathered around me, you remind me of nothing so much as a swarm of bees. <laughs> well, well, now, honey bees. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. <clears throat> Isn't that a beautiful thought? I mean, the analogy between bees and human boozing, buzzing, beezing, I mean. 
<laughs> I got it. <laughs> the industrious fella is the honeybee. He flits from flower to flower in the sunshine, gathering, uh, <laughs> gathering honey, <laughs> which he brings home to his friends in the hives. In other words, he brings the hives to his friends. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're all a swarm of bees sitting around my pot of honey. We're all honey bees with our mama bees. <laughs> and from the <laughs> frantic pastas that my mama bee is making at me, I think it means that I should Beehive myself. <laughs> I mean, be who? Go uh, hame. Be oh. <laughs> oh, fire! Oh, now, don't get excited, folks. Now, just go right ahead with the next course. <laughs> All right, dear, the fish is cremated. Oh, that's dreadful. <laughs> Please take that awful badge from Tony. That's all right, darling. I'll look out there, Tony. No, we have no fish. Well, just go ahead, serve the turkey. There's been a slight accident in the kitchen. Nothing very serious, <laughs> but uh, there'll be no fish. Well, that's all right, Mrs. Cobb. I don't need any brain food. <laughs> How about you, E.W.? I never eat it. <laughs> Wipe them plates off, Tony. Sure. Oh. oh, good grief, Emma, what's happened? Oh, the turkey, sir. The dog stole it. I saw him. Oh. That's the limit. Well, darling, you can't help it. Little idiosyncrasy of turkeys, they always take to the wing. Ernest, you're intoxicated. No, darling, intoxicated with pleasure. <laughs> now, sir, what are we going to do? It's all right, it's all right, Emma. Serve the dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Cobb, I want to compliment you on this marvelous fruit pudding. It's really delicious. It's the best I've ever eaten. Fruit? Say, Mr. Crosby, you don't know anything about fruit. Now, you just wait. I'm going to show you something. What does he mean, J.K.? Just hold your horses, E.W. You'll find out. Mr. Crosby, this made the fruit pudding you just had. Look here. Dunbar Fruit Pudding, best bar none. Carries a natural fruit aroma and flavor from tree to your home. Do you mean that pudding I just ate was made of canned fruit? He's right, E.W. We've got them all stopped with that. Now, now, quit stalling, Mr. Crosby. We want your business. You know, you've worn the boss out. He's been up four nights with you. <laughs> now, you just said this is the best you ever had. And that still goes. Let's go back to town, J.K., and I'll fill in your order sheet. You don't mind, do you, Mrs. Cobb, if we go? We really have a great deal of business to attend to tonight. Certainly not. Thank right you. this way. <laughs> there we are. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for everything. Honey. Oh. <laughs> Come on, E.W. I'll, uh, I'll just walk down to the corner and see that you get started right. All right. Oh, Ernest. Yeah? When you get to the office in the morning, you'll find your things in the seventh vice president's office. Oh, boy. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>